Revelation chapter 6. I appreciate everybody's prayers for us. Um, yeah, that was pretty rough last night. Seeing her that way. Uh, and there just ain't a thing you can do for it. They, they gave them, the hospital gave Matthew and Paige some kind of medicine uh, to give her um, when she has a seizure like that, and they did. That was the first thing the ambulance attendant asked. And, and they, I mean, they didn't wait long either. They scooped her up and put her in the in the ambulance and down the road they went. So I appreciate them, whoever that was, I pray God would bless them for that. Um, but just continue to pray for her, lift her up if you would please. Uh, Revelation chapter six, one of these days the Lord's gonna come get us and we won't have to deal with all this stuff, amen? Even so come quickly, Lord Jesus. This is the beginning of it. He's opening the seals when he opens that book. If you follow the, if you follow the trail of Revelation, you, the seals open the trumpets or release the trumpets. The trumpets are there to warn of the wrath of God. Once the wrath of God hits, it doesn't stop until it's done that's why there's seven vials of wrath that seven means complete this is it and um, there's a lot of lot of controversy a lot of people have a lot of different ideas about when the rapture takes place and so on but without a doubt God has not appointed us under wrath amen and I'm glad of that so Revelation 6, verse 1, I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. He that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him. He went forth conquering and to conquer. We talked about this last Sunday. So he is, he is a conquering, and these are spirits that you're seeing. These are spirits. Okay, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, and then verse 3, when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. There was given unto him a great sword. Uh, verse 5. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast. Who, who are these beasts that are saying this? Does anybody remember? You didn't know there was going to be a pop quiz, did you? These are the four beasts from Revelation chapter 4 and 5 that are the cherubim that carry the throne of God. You see it in Ezekiel 1, Ezekiel 10. Uh, I think Moses mentioned it, that God rides on a cherubim. He flies on the wings of the wind. Uh, and then Revelation 4, you see it. Revelation 5, you see it. So these four beasts, these four living, Ezekiel calls them living creatures. John calls them beasts. They have a humanoid appearance to them. And, but they have four faces. One of the faces is the face of a man. One of the faces is the face of an ox or a calf. One of the faces is the face of a lion. And the other face is the face of a what? A man, an ox, a lion, and a eagle. Very good. Uh, that's who's doing the talking here. That's who's saying this. Um, verse 5 again, when they opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, come and see. And I beheld and lo, a black horse. 
And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And we'll look at other places in the Bible that might shed light on what's going on here. Varying interpretations. Some people say the oil and the wine were expensive things. So that means that the expensive stuff, is there's going to be plenty of that. But the things you need to eat, like barley and wheat, uh, there's not going to be enough of. I've, I've read and remember, remember that. Why is it when looters loot in the midst of a riot or in the midst of, a, of some catastrophe like hurricanes or things like that, why is it the looters always go after things that they can't eat? Why is it when COVID hit, everybody went out and bought, you know, 50 cases of toilet paper? Man, give me 50 bags of rice. Okay, that way, you know, I can always go down in the woods, okay? Um, but anyway, we need to open too much information, right? Uh, when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. And this, this fits in with my thing that anytime you see four things together, one of them's different than the other three. And that's what you see here. And the first three seals open, you have one horse and one rider. When this fourth one opens, there's an additional thing that comes with it. Verse eight, I look and behold a pale horse. Uh, and it basically means, actually I looked up just out of curiosity, uh, the, the Greek word pale here. I just wanted to see what that was. And the Greek word is chloros. What does that sound like? Clorox. That's where we get it. It is a, uh, here on the other three beasts, you have a clear color. You have white, you have black, you have red, but that fourth one is like a bland, it's pale, it's like a grayish thing. You know, on days like we've had all last week here, where it's been cloudy and overcast every day, everything looks gray. In the wintertime, when it's cloudy and overcast, everything looks gray. But that word is where we get the word Clorox bleach from. It's Clorox. But anyway, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death. And now think about that. If you've ever been with somebody that has died, just died, I mean, there's an immediate, there's an immediate change in their everything, in their face, everything. You can see it in their eyes. Hollywood never gets this right. It's, I guess it's hard. I guess they don't actually kill people in movies where people die. Um, but there's an immediate change because the heart stops pumping and that's what gives the color to our face. And it's what gives the, the moisture to our eyes. And when someone dies immediately, that paleness comes over them. The eyes dry up, even though they might be open, the eyes dry up and it's, you can see literally the face of death on them. They are pale like that. So on, on this horse, his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him. Think about it. Death and hell are actually mentioned as they're given like characteristics of a, a person. We know that Satan has the power over death. Uh, one common myth that everybody says, well, the devil's going to come right out of hell and get you. The devil doesn't live in hell right now. Right now is the prince of the power of the air. He's going to live in hell 
for a thousand years. But anyway, death and hell follow with him, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, look at this, sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. One, two, three, four. Four different things that God is going to kill one-fourth of the population. Now, uh, I always like to point this out. Because, God, I mean, I'm dead serious about this. Last couple of years, I really got caught up in things I was reading on the Internet about what was supposed to be happening behind the scenes with Trump being president and so on and so on. And when 2020 happened, that's all I can say until June 17th. When 2020 happened and we had a new president, every bit of that stuff I went, that was all made up. And I fell for it. I fell for it. Okay? And God dealt with me. Mike, get back in the Bible. Stick with it. You're never going to be wrong if you'll just stick with the Word of God. Amen? Never going to be wrong. So, there are some that say that there is a grand depopulation program where the government's trying to kill everybody and they're going to reduce the world's population and so-and-so is in charge of it and so-and-so is part of it and they're going to kill off everybody and on and on and on. If you stick with the Bible, who is it here that kills more people than anybody else has ever done. It's God. By opening those first four seals. Those first four. The bow, the white horse comes out. The bow, he's conquering. The second beast comes out. He's red. He's taking peace from the earth that they should kill one another. You got people dying everywhere there. The third beast comes out. He's got a pair of balances in his hand that obviously deals with famines. And then the fourth beast comes out and actually mentions that a fourth... So what is... Um, what is it? About 7.5 billion people right now? In my lifetime, in my lifetime, the population of the earth has doubled. Um from like 3 billion to over 7 billion people. So what's a fourth of 7.5 billion? Who's got a calculator? Huh? A little less than 2 billion. Little less than 2 billion people. 2 billion people are killed immediately upon the entrance of these first four horses. That's a lot of people. A lot of people. And this is, this is not anywhere near what's going to happen later. We haven't even gotten to the trumpet judgments. In the trumpet judgments, then you've got another third of the world's population dead because all the water on the earth is turned to blood. Anyway, we'll get to that. Now turn to Zechariah 6. When I mentioned earlier that these were spirits, this is what the, this is what the Bible will tell you. And I, you know, I read a lot of books on Bible prophecy. I took a course on the Book of Revelation. I never, never heard of what was in Zechariah six. I never knew that. The mentioning of these horses and these riders mentioned somewhere else in the Bible. Never knew that. But these are spirits that are released on the earth. 
They're not men riding horses. Okay? They're not human beings riding horses. These are spirits that are released on the earth. And these spirits are what's causing these things to take place. How many of you, how many of you can understand that? I mean, how many people have tried to take over the earth? Take over the world and rule the world. How many people have tried that since the flood? Let's say since the flood. Nimrod tried it. You got other, Nebuchadnezzar tried it. Alexander the Great tried it. The Roman, Hitler, they've all tried it. Okay? It doesn't work. One man can't rule the entire earth. But I guarantee you, a third of the gods can, a third of the devils can, and they're going to. God's going to let them have their way on this earth. Look, look at Zechariah 6, verse 1. And I turned and lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, there came four chariots out from between two mountains. And the mountains were mountains of brass. In the first chariot were red horses. Well, that's... We just read the red horses in Revelation 6. The second chariot, black horses. And the third chariot, white horses. So we got the same colors. We've got red, white, and black. But remember the fourth one's always different. The fourth one in Revelation was pale. And this one here is the Bible calls grizzled and bay. What does that mean? Grizzled in bay. Do what? <laughs> They're spotted. Okay? They're spotted horses. And um, so they got multicolors on them, sort of like a calico cat. Just different colors on it. So the fourth one's different than the other three. Then I answered and said unto the angel that talked with me, What are these, my Lord? And the angel answered and said unto me, These are the four spirits. There it is. These are the four spirits. Of the yes, David. Uh, that didn't, I didn't catch it. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's possible. Because well, here's one thing I know. And I've actually had uh, some people in our church ask me these questions. Um some people have the idea that God is never supportive of like a president of our country or anything like that who's a bad guy. Okay? God, God, God did not put them in office. And I 100% disagree with that. The Bible is very, very clear on this. Nobody rules without God's say so. Nobody does. Read the book of Judges. Read the book of Judges. When the Israelites turned bad, and they're still God's people, when the Israelites turned bad, God put them under cruel authority. Until they got, they, until they figured out that they were tired of being enslaved and they didn't revolt they cried unto God and they didn't revolt like in the days of King Saul why didn't the Israelites just revolt against the Philistines because Philistines took all their weapons away and made sure that nobody in who was a Jew was a blacksmith do you think Hitler 
could have killed all those Jews had the Jews all had guns? Oh. Okay, so he disarmed them. And let me tell you what's let me tell you what's going on. They may not ever have to pass a gun law or an anti-gun law in this country. You hit people hard enough, they're voluntarily turning their guns in. We're raising up a whole generation of children that have been taught from the young age that guns are evil. Don't touch guns. So they'll never, they'll never be able to defend themselves. And then we're doing the same thing with the Bible. Yeah, churches all over this, all over the world that are telling people, you, you don't need a Bible. I'll tell you what God said. And they voluntarily turn that authority over to that man. That's disarmament. Okay? And it happens. When, when the people cried out, God would send a judge. The judge would come in and save them and restore them back to righteousness. And they'd live that way for a while. God would bless them. They had plenty to eat. But then they'd always turn back to their sins again. And then what would happen? God put them under cruel authority again. You will never, you will never win this argument that God doesn't have bad people being president or bad people being judges or bad people being leaders of nations, especially when they're Christians. You'll never win that argument. It says it clearly in Romans 13. So, you know what? It could very well be that God puts this world under cruel authority and he does it while we're here. Was Paul, did Paul ever revolt against either the Sanhedrin uh, or Caesar? No. When Paul got arrested and the Jews were going to kill him, Paul said, uh, wait a minute, he told the Roman soldiers, excuse me, I'm a Roman citizen. I have rights. I have a right to appeal to Caesar. And one of the soldiers said, with great sum did I buy my citizenship. How do you get it? He said, my dad was a Roman. Bingo, he's a Roman citizen. He has rights. He appealed to Caesar, and Caesar thought he was God for crying out loud. Caesar was no saint Caesar. He was a bad guy. But Paul used the law. Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and unto God what is God's. So anyway, when God starts releasing these things, number one, I think we'll know it. And there'll be no argument about it. Number two, clearly, a lot of people are going to die. A lot of them. Uh, these, let me finish this out. These are the four spirits. This is verse 5. These are the four spirits of the heavens which go forth from standing before the Lord of all the earth. The black horses which are therein go forth into the north country. The white go forth after them. And the grizzled go forth toward the south country. And the bay went forth and sought to go uh, that they might walk to and fro throughout the earth. And he said, get you hence, walk to and fro through the earth. So they walked to and fro throughout uh, through the earth. Uh, your homework this week, study Ezekiel 14, the whole chapter. Ezekiel 14. Study it, read it, memorize it. Don't memorize it and burn it, just memorize it, all right? But he's going to show you the four sore judgments. And they just happen to match what you see in Revelation chapter 6. God calls them his four sore judgments. All right? Father, bless this book. I thank you for it. Lord, give us a zeal for knowledge of the Word of God. Give us a heart, Lord, that's turned to our Bibles. Father, open our eyes to wondrous things that are inside of this precious book. Lord, we need it for the days that are coming. Father, we pray that you'd bless this Sunday school time. Thank you, Lord, for our church. Bless us and use us for your kingdom's sake, your glory's sake, your name's sake. Father, bless my family. 
this morning. Be with my grandchildren and all my children, I pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen.